Let me first start by saying in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I openly bear witness that there is no God but Allah, by whatever name you call him. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. As students of religion and as students of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we thank Allah and we believe in Allah and all of his prophets and all of the scriptures that they brought. We thank Allah for Abraham and Moses and the Abrahamic prophets and the revelation of the Holy Torah or the Old Testament. We thank Allah for Jesus, his disciples, the apostles, the scripture that he brought, the Injil, the New Testament, the Gospel. We thank Allah for Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah 1400 years ago and the divine revelation of the Holy Quran, the book of scripture of the Muslims. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon each and every one of these servants of his. But of course, as students of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we could never thank Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs. Yes, sir. Our affairs, and I'm speaking of black people in the hell right. from North America, right. specifically and oppressed people throughout the world, he intervened in our affairs in the divine person of Master Father Muhammad, whom we know to be the great Mahdi of the Muslim world and the great Messiah of the Christian and the Jewish tradition. Yes, sir. We thank him for upon his arrival when he came and God willing, It'll be 2019, it'll be 89 years yes, sir. on July 4th, the anniversary of his coming, because he came in July of 1930. That's right. But upon his arrival, he found one from amongst us, one who had the same experience that most black people had here in America one who had experienced the horrors of Jim Crow, one who could remember his grandparents being slaves, one who actually saw a black man lynched. This beautiful black man who would become the most powerful black man to ever walk the earth. That's right. We thank him for raising the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, right. whom we believe to be the exalted Christ of your scriptures, the fulfillment of Jesus and Muhammad. Yes, sir. That's yes, right. sir. But if I live to be a thousand, I personally could never thank Allah enough for raising one to remind us that God is present. See, I was too young, just like many of us were too young, to receive Master Farad Muhammad. Yes, sir. Because he came in July of 1930. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, no, I don't think any of us were here then. <laughs> and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who he raised up, ministered unto us for 40 years. That's right. And then he went away. He departed. Yes, sir. But when he uh, departed, that was in 1975. And at that time, myself, I was about three, three and a half years old. So I never got to hear or witness the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So again, I'm thankful to Allah for them leaving one in our midst that is a reminder that God is present in, in the world. Yes, sir. Go ahead. A beautiful black man, the, the, the baddest, boldest black man that we've ever seen. One who speaks truth to power without any reservation, without any apology. 
a beautiful black man and an example of what it is to be a man, a warner, a mercy from God in our midst. That one I speak of is the man I'm, I'm attempting to represent to you today. His name is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And in their names, and in the names of all of the righteous, we greet you in the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, sir. And if you do not know what those words mean, they simply mean peace be unto you. They are really uh, a prayer. They're really a prayer. Yes, Whenever someone gives you that greeting, it's more than them just saying, hi, how are you? Hello. <laughs> What's popping? What's cracking? No, to say, assalamu alaikum, is to wish you God's peace. Yes, sir. That's a beautiful thing. That's a very good thing. <laughs> For yes, somebody sir. to sure. wish you God's peace. Yes, sir. Because when you got God's peace, man, there is no lack of security whatsoever. That's right. You could be you could be walking in the valley under the shadow of death, and you don't fear no evil. That's right. Because you got God's peace. Is that right? That's right. Praise be to Allah. Now, before we get started, we, we just want to issue our disclaimer and say that, uh, brother, and Brother Gerald uh, articulated it very well in his opening. What we are attempting to do today is to give you something of value, something that, God willing, you can use in your life, something that will be useful, right? Yes, sir. We're not attempting to enter entertain you. We're not attempting to make mockery of others. That's right. Uh, we just want to give you the truth. And based upon that truth, we give you, God willing, we hope that you make the right decision. Um, I by no means am a perfect vessel. So if I'm mistaken, I don't, if I make a mistake or mistakes plural and I don't get it over in the proper way, then all of that fault belongs to me. But if you get anything of any positivity from this message, if you can use anything uh, from it to help yourself, if you learn anything, then all praise belongs to Allah. All right? Now, y'all all right? Yes, yes sir. sir. I know it's a little warm in here. I know it's a little warm. Our subject today is really a continuation of what we started last week. Last week, our subject was wars and rumors of wars. And it's very interesting because we find ourselves in a war. That's right. Many of us find ourselves in many wars. <laughs> but the subject that we want to end with is realizing the victory. Because in this war, God has already promised us the victory. That's right. That's right. Did y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the subject is realizing in a certain way. Because realize means that you recognize something as being real. Right? Yes, sir. That's the recognition of something being real. You realize that, that that's what it is. I realize I'm in this group here today listening to this brother up here speak. I realize that. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, that, that's one part of the definition of the word. But the other part, the, the focus that I really want us to focus upon is realize also, also means for you to make something real. Yes, sir. Kind of lost y'all now. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Realize also means for you to make something real. Anybody ever dreamt of doing something in your life? Where's your big black? Is it still a dream? 
Yes, sir. Okay. If it's a dream, we have not realized that particular dream. That's right. But if we realize that dream is no longer a dream, now it's a reality. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if I wanted to uh, buy a, I wanted to have a Mercedes Benz when I was 14 years old. And now that I'm 40, I find myself with a Mercedes Benz. That dream was realized. Yes, sir. It's no longer a dream. We took it, and I don't even really like the word dream. We took that, I like to call it vision, and we made it a reality. Is that right? Yes, so sir. the scripture says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Well, the people die. That's yes, another sir. word yes, for sir. perish. If you Go don't ahead. have no vision, you're going to die because you don't have no purpose for life. Mm. Faith without works. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, so sir. instead of living a purposeful life, living to realize your vision or your dreams, you're living on accident. That's right. Hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> you're living according to happenstance. <clears throat> you're living based upon hope, right? But there's no realization, there's no actualization of what it is that we visualize in our mind. Right. So what I'm saying to us today is that with regards to this war and with, regard, with regards to rumors of wars, because they all it's happening all over the earth. We are at a war in this country. We have to realize that we've already won. That's right. Go ahead, brother. We have to realize that the victory is already Hours. That's we right. just have to have the will mm. to see it and to walk into it. Yes, sir. See, because if you don't have no vision, you can't see that you already won. But God already told you that you won. Come on, come on, come on. Didn't he? Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> Praise be to our Lord. So, most of us, we don't realize a lot of us, that we've actually, that we're actually at war, for mm -hmm. one. Right. And we defined war last week, and I'll go over it again, as a state of armed conflict between different nations or states or different groups within a nation or a state. A sustained effort to deal with, this is number two, a sustained effort to deal with or end a particular unpleasant or desirable or undesirable situation or condition. Again, a sustained effort to deal with or end a particular unpleasant or undesirable situation or condition. Mm. So last week, by God's grace, we made it plain that as a people, we are in a very unpleasant and undesirable yes, sir. Yes, sir. condition Go in ahead. this country. Come on, come on, Go ahead. Come on, come on. And that we have actually been fighting to get out of yes, that sir. condition That's the right. whole time that we've been here in this country. Yes, sir. We've been actually, we've been actually fighting. But from our vantage point, the war has been very one-sided. Yes, sir. Go yes, ahead. Sir. <laughs> right? Come yes, on, sir. It, 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 man, look, I'm not going to say it seems, but we've been losing lives on the regular. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In this country, every single day, we lose lives on the regular. Yes, sir. We constantly, the victims, we constantly, now, you know, nowadays, you know, we in the internet age, we, we, we constantly the hashtag. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on. We don't want to be that anymore. That's right. We don't want to be the hashtag. Yeah. Oh, That's hell right. no. That's Let right. folks be the hashtag. Yeah. We've been the hashtag for far too long. 
Now, the other thing that's going on with regards to wars and rumors of wars is, of course, these armed conflicts or these potential armed conflicts between nations, particularly between the United States and Iran, yes, sir. right? Yes, sir. The United States and North Korea. Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. These wars that America always seems to find herself in. Yeah, that's right. You ever wonder why America just finds herself in so many different wars? Mm. Conflicts. Yeah. It's because, according to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, that's what she was made to do. That's right. This is a news flash. The white man is a warmonger by nature. That's yes, right. Sir. That's right. That's the nature in which he was created. Yes, sir. He was created to make war with the original people. That's right. His whole mindset is to control all of the resources on the planet. That's right. Because he knows in his mind that he got but a short time. That's right. That's right. Are y'all listening? Yes, yes sir. sir. A very short time on the earth. In fact, hmm. go ahead. This goes right back to the title of the subject, Realizing the Victory. The founder of the Nation of Islam, Master Father Muhammad, when he came, he told us that the white man's time was up. Up. Oh, go ahead. Said. Go ahead. Before he even got here, he said, his time is up. Yes, yes sir. It expired in 1914. Yes, sir. There's some other things historically that happened in 1914. That's well. right. But just know that the white man's time expired in 1914. So by nature and mathematically, he knows that he's living on borrowed time. Come on, right, come on, right. come on, come on, come on. He knows it. Mm. So he's going to fight. Mm. <laughs> as hard as he can to stay on top, as long as he can, because he knows he got but a short time. Yes, Come sir, on. that's sir. right. He knows it's over. It's over. But the holdup, according to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, which is why Master Father Muhammad raised him up, was the total liberation and salvation of a fallen people who would take their rightful place after the fall and the destruction of the Caucasian. That's oh, right. Sir. Go ahead, brother. Go sir. ahead. And that people who is to take their rightful place after the fall of the Caucasian mm. is you and I. Yes, yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Mm. But we holding them up. <laughs> we keeping them in power. Yes, sir. And you know how we're keeping them in power, brothers and sisters? Come on. We're keeping him in power by acting just like him. That's right. That's right. right. Come on, sir. Come That's on. right. Come on. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Come on. Go ahead. It's the truth. That's right. It's the truth. We cannot be who we were made to be or created to be because we weren't made to do anything. They were made. We were created. We cannot be who we were created to be until we start acting like our own self. That's right. That's right. So the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, when he came, he came to give us a knowledge of self. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, he said that is the prerequisite knowledge. That's right. Knowledge of self, knowledge of God, knowledge of the time, yes, sir. knowledge of the devil. Go ahead. But to have knowledge of self is to have knowledge of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Because when you know yourself, you'll know that you actually are God. Yes, sir. Right. Is right. that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Oh, yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. So yes, now, in 2019, <laughs> 2019, 400 years after they say we were brought into slavery. That's right. You know, they say we were brought here in 1619. When I say they, I mean white folks. And the reason why white folks can say that we were brought here in 1619 is because they conquered us and they brought us over here 
And everybody knows if you study the art of war, whoever wins the war gets to write the history. That's right. That's right. Mm. Go ahead. <laughs> Come on. Is that right? That's, yes, right. Sir. That's right. So they say we were brought here in 1619. So 400 years later, in 2019, they're having a study in their Congress about, no, 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 wait. They're having a hearing in yes, their sir. Congress. To have a study. <laughs> to have, thank you, cousin. <laughs> to see if they want to have a study on reparations. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Go ahead. Now, I want you all to realize how absurd this is. They're having hearings to see if they should conduct a 13-member study on reparations. Yeah. As if the transatlantic slave trade, subsequent slavery, Jim Crow, <laughs> racism throughout America has never happened. Now they need to study whether or not right, right, yeah, yeah. reparations right, right. are appropriate. Yeah. When you and I are the evidence yes, sir. that reparations are owed. Yes, sir. No question sir. about it. Yes, sir. No question about it. So they're having a study, and, and we talked about it a little bit last week, man, how they brought the most milk, toast, butter, biscuit, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. 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 Come on. Go ahead. sugary Negroes that they can find to talk about reparations. They brought, a, they brought one little brother, I can't even think of his name, but they're propping him up now. Yeah. He's only 22 years old. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the little brother was just so dumb. <laughs> just so dumb. Like, and, 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 and this is not to, <laughs> you know, cast dispersion on, on anybody who is young, but I mean, damn, man, if you don't have the life experience, at least do some studying. Yeah, right? that's right. Yes, you sir. know what I'm saying? That's they, right. They, they had no business bringing somebody that young and that dumb into a meeting that was supposed to be of that much important. That's right. But here's the thing that we have to understand brothers and sisters, is that the reason why they brought a person like that and the reason why the hearings were so weak and watered down and diluted is because they didn't want to lend any substance to the discussion about repairing us. That's right. That's right, sir. And the reason why they didn't want to lend any substance, real substance, to the, to the discussion about our repair is because they don't care about that. That's right. That's right. That's right. They disrespect on a regular our contribution. That's right. They don't value our contribution. You understand what yes, I'm saying? Yes, sir. They don't recognize us as being true citizens in this country. That's right. There's no other reason why they would do that. You do understand that, right? Yes, sir. See, black people got to wake up today. You know, the Honorable <laughs> Elijah Muhammad, Go ahead. and I want to say, uh, uh, I heard Malcolm X say it, that if they won't treat you right, what makes you think they're going to teach you? That's right. right. That's, right. Sure. Sure. That's right. That's right. And the reality is that we've been treated so bad in this country that they really taught us in a way to where not only do they not value us, but we don't value ourselves. That's right, sir. That's right. That is too correct right there. Because there's no way in the world, man, that we should be in these hearings. And I mean, and the brothers were just so monotone and just so, there was no passion yeah. involved in it. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There was no passion whatsoever involved in this argument. Kumbaya. Yeah, the Kumbaya brothers up there. Yeah, that's right. The Kumbaya brothers. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> what, what, what did they say about Oh, man. <laughs> he really didn't say nothing. I mean, to be quite honest with you, but he, but he was saying that uh, 
he was saying that they couldn't put mon they, they shouldn't put any monetary value on our suffering. He was basically saying that we don't need reparations. That's what, That's what he, he said. <laughs> That's what he was saying. saying. Yes, sir. That's what he said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But they they marched these these people out, and, and this and this uh, thing was so weak. But thank Allah, the following Saturday, in Cobra did they think. That's right. Yes, sir. Oh, come on. That's right. Come on. Go ahead. <laughs> and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan gave the keynote address about reparations. Go ahead. And, you know, leave it to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Oh, man. Beautiful brother. Beautiful brother. But what he said was so powerful, and, and you can read part of the coverage in this edition of The Final Call. But I want to read something, and it speaks to what we're talking about here today. On page 20 of this Final Call. This is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan talking about our condition. So, when you look at black people, you're looking at a creature made in America. Yes, sir. Made devils because that's what the enemy is. And he could not make you righteous because righteousness is not a part of his nature. That's right. right. Yes, sir. We have been under them so long. We are fornicators and adulterers today. We are freaks today. Yeah, go ahead. We are lesbians. We are homosexuals. We are transgender. We are queer. Whatever the white man is, that's what we are. Because he can only make us what he is. Yeah, go ahead. So you can't say you want reparations and think it's money. What will a devil do with money? What will a white man's nigga do with money and no love for himself or his own people. Mm, go I ahead. Stop right there. Go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead, brother. Go ahead. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll have questions at the end, okay. sister, okay? Thank you, ma'am. What will a white man's nigga do with money? See, because it speaks to what it is that we're asking for with regards to reparations. Because reparations means what? To repair, right? That's right. And so we can calculate, and we talked about it uh, last week, we can calculate how much slave labor went into building this country. At least 310 years worth of slave labor on the part of hundreds of thousands, millions of black people who had to work, not from nine to five, but from Kanksy to yeah, Kanksy. that's right. Right? That's and right. What they were, the, the wealth that they were able to amass based upon that labor that you could put monetary value on That's that. right. And if we were to add it up, like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, they would have to give us the whole damn country. That's, That's right. right. Yes, they would have to if we're going to actually add it up. Yeah. We're gonna add it up. Right. But what the minister is speaking to is our condition. Yes, sir. So we have to ask ourselves the question, and many of us, we might do all right if we got some money in the form of reparations. Some of us. Some of us. Some of us. Thank you, sister. That's right. <laughs> Some of us. That's right. But if we are the white man's nigga, yeah. what's going to happen if they give us some money? Get right, right, right back, back to him. Get right back to <laughs> Exactly right. He's going to have his money right back. He can't wait to give us some of his little yeah, that's uh, right. uh, uh, pieces of paper with his face printed all on it. You know what I'm saying? Because we're going to give it right back to him. We're going to go buy a car, go buy some dope, Go buy some Henny. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We're going to do whatever it is that Negroes do. That's right. And party it on up, yeah. party it on down, and we're going to be right back in the same condition, yeah, that's right. man, in a year or so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, we have to develop ourselves. Yes, sir. We yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. That's right. We have to develop ourselves yes, sir. to where if we do have resources, we know what to do with it. Yeah, that's right. right. 
You understand what I'm saying? I'm if sorry. I got resources, man, I'm not going to just lift myself up, man. I got to lift my people up. Right. You dig? That's how, man, that's how we're supposed to contribute to humanity. That's why Allah raised us. That's right. Is that right? That's right. Sure. So, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he mentioned, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan mentioned this. He told the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, brother, that whatever you ask for, always think for the whole. Think for the whole. That's right. That's right. Always think for the whole. Yes, sir. Because we're on different levels, each and every one of us. Yes, sir. I'm not where you at, you're not where I'm at. You see what I'm saying? Yes, we sir. got different educational levels. We have different uh, uh, professional levels. We have different levels of maturity. See, an immature person, if I take my, my two-year-old grandson into the store and I give him $20, he's going to come out with $20 worth of candy. That's yeah, right. that's right. Yes, <laughs> Is that right? Yes, sir. That's, that's, that's his level. Yes, sir. So, when you have leadership, the leadership has to think for the whole. For the whole. That's right. Yes, sir. So I'm my own leader, brother. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, that might be true. But the, if that's the case, though, where are we leading ourselves to? Yeah, that's, that's the right. Question. That's the question. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, think for the whole. And so, with regards to reparations, mm -hmm. the nation of Islam is very clear on what we want. That's oh, right. That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> No. Very, clear Very clear on what we want. We don't. I don't want no money with no white man's uh, face on it. That's right. Hell, I want to print my own damn money. Yes, sir. Y you understand what yes, I'm saying? Sir. Yes, sir. Y'all yes, remember? Uh, Y'all remember coming to America? <laughs> when Prince Akeem got there and he gave he gave some money. <laughs> and Pop said, "Baby, he got his own money." When I say he got his own money, he got his own money. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Why can't we print our own money? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So, on point number four, on what the Muslims want, I just want to read this to you. Listen to this and just see if it sounds good with regards to reparations. We want our people in America, whose parents or grandparents were descendants of slaves, to be allowed to establish a separate state or territory of their own, either on this continent or elsewhere. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to provide such land and that the area must be fertile and minerally rich. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to maintain and supply our needs in this separate state or territory for the next 20 to 25 years until we are able to produce and supply our own needs. Yes sir. yes, sir. Since we cannot get along with them in peace and equality after giving them 400 years yes. of our sweat and blood and receiving in return some of the worst treatment human beings have ever experienced, we believe our contributions to this land and the suffering forced upon us by white America justifies our demand for complete separation in a state or territory of our own. Yes, yes sir. sir. Right. Yes, sir. Right. Now, how's that sound? That sounds oh, very, very Yes, sir. Very, very yes, sir. Let's go. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We don't want their money. That's the Give us some land. Yes, sir. That's right. That's some land. That's yes, right. sir. See, because that's something, man, look, if you, man, let me tell y'all something. Land and ownership is the basis of all wealth. That's, That's right. right. That's right. That's right. Are y'all listening? Yes, yes sir. sir. Land and ownership. Put this in your roller. Yes, sir. Put it in your yes, sir. <laughs> is the basis for all wealth. That's right. If you just got money, you're not wealthy. That's right. Right. I'm going to say that again. Yes, sir. If you got a million dollars, but you don't own a home, you don't own no land, you don't own no apartment building, 
All you got is a million dollars cash, you're not wealthy. That's right. You're not even close to wealthy. That million dollars ain't worth the paper. That's exactly right, sister. <laughs> the paper is printed off. That's right. Because that million dollars, that ain't nothing but a uh, uh, million dollars worth of Federal Reserve notes. It's not backed by nothing. That's right. That's right. So whenever you get money, and wealthy people will tell you, they don't keep a lot of cash. That's right. They have assets. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Meaning, they have land. Yes, sir. They got things that are of value. Yes. It's not a car. That's right. Car is not an asset. That's right. That's right. right. Car is a liability. That's right. If it does not retain value, it is a liability. That's right. Come on. An asset is something that uh, uh, retains its value or goes up. Or goes up. Yes, sir. But yes, if sir. it depreciates, as soon as you purchase it, it is not an asset, it is a liability. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, as we go into business, brothers and sisters, the first thing that we should try and attain is some sort of real estate, some sort of land. That's right. That's real right. talk. That's right. Real talk. You gotta have that. You'll never be well. You can't. You can leave money to your children, mm -hmm. but what they gonna do with it? <laughs> That's right. But if you have land, man, this is how. This is how you acquire wealth. If you're gonna, if you're, if you're, the other thing that you can invest in, then this is a worthy investment. I'm gonna say this. People. Yes, sir. Because people are land. Did y'all hear me? Come yes, on. sir. Go ahead. <laughs> In our lessons, I'm going to prove my point. People are land. In our lessons, we have, but well, first off, let me say, we're giving, giving when we come as students of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad student enrollment and what we call actual facts. That's right. Part of our actual facts that we learn is that the land that comes up out of the water, that the earth is comprised of one quarter land, three quarters water. That's right. That That's the right. land That's right. is 57 million, 255 million square miles, coming up out of 139 million, 685 thousand square miles, right? That's right. And that sure. the useful land that is used every day by the total population of the planet Earth is 29 million square miles. 23 million of it is used by the original, 6 million is used by the colored man, right? But when you got 29 million miles of useful land, but you have 57,255,000 square miles of land total, that means you got 28,255,000 square miles of land that is not considered useful. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hmm. Toss that around in your head for a moment. Okay. Look at that. That's almost 50% yeah. yes, of the land that's not useful. Why isn't it useful? Mm. Have you ever asked yourself that in the lessons? Why isn't that land useful? Right. It is because we have not made use of it. Come on, yeah, right. go ahead. Come on, sir. That simple. It's not useful because we haven't made use of it. Right, right. See, that's why I said that you can also invest in people. You can invest in land, but you can invest in people. Billionaire Robert Smith. I wish I had a picture of my brother. Recently in the news, you all heard, probably heard about it. This brother's a, a billionaire. He's actually from Denver, Colorado. Got more money than Oprah. Money long. What he did was, at, he went to the Morehouse uh, graduation ceremony. He, he uh, delivered the commencement address. And after that, he paid for the whole graduating classes, 2019, student loans. That's right. Paid them all. Paid them all. Yes, sir. Now, y'all might, that's great. That's more than great. Yes, sir. 
That's more than great. Go ahead. That was a revolutionary act. Yes, sir. sir. I said, brother, why is that a revolutionary act? That was a revolutionary act because he invested in people. Yes, sir. He invested in that entire class. And you know what he required of them for, uh, for doing that? The only thing that he required of them for doing that was that they pay it forward. Yes, sir. Now that's, that's powerful. That's revolutionary because now he just planted a seed yes, in sir. the minds of a whole graduate, graduating class of college educated black men. Yeah, go ahead. Oh my goodness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh man, it's a beautiful thing. Yes, sir. It's a beautiful thing because if just one of them pays it forward. Yeah. But then he tells that person who he uh, uh, does something for to do the same thing. Right. See, this thing becomes contagious. Right? Right. That's how we get ourselves up, investing in people. Yes, sir. That's what the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad are about. Yes, Investing in people. Getting you to know yourself. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Getting you to understand that, look, okay, if we do get some money or some land out of these crackers, which is highly doubtful, because they don't, let me tell you, they don't want to give us nothing. Nothing. And they polling these white people after the reparations discussion, 90% of them say, man, I'm getting that. Yeah, that's what they're saying. <laughs> that's what they're saying. That's 90%. I said, nah, they don't deserve that. Wow. Which shows how different we are from them. Yes, sir. Right? right. So, huh. they don't want to give us anything. So to invest in one another, that is what it's all about. In the nation of Islam, Remember, we're talking about realizing the victory. Most of us, if we have a holy name of God, after our ex, we receive Muhammad. That's right. My name is Herman Muhammad. That's my brother Gerald Muhammad. My sister yes, Karen Muhammad. Yes, Fatira sir. Muhammad. We are, 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 we are family. Is yes, that sir. right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when we come into this family, we take on the family name. That's right. Is that right? That's yeah. right. Sir. In this book, Quran, and I'm going to read this. Surah 47, or chapter 47. Yes, sir. Surah is just an Arabic word for chapter. Right? Yes, sir. It's entitled Wool yes, or Al Katab. Yeah. It's actually entitled Muhammad. Right. But it's also entitled Al Katab Wool. Wool. Yes, sir. Remember, we're talking about war, rumors of war. We're talking about victory. Victory. And realizing yes, sir. victory. When we take on this name, Muhammad. We have to understand that it is a big name. Uh -huh. mm. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's a big name. It's the name that God wore when he came. Master Father Muhammad. Yes, sir. It's the name that he gave his servant, Elijah Muhammad. That's right. Yes, sir. It is the name that our divine reminder, the divine warning in our midst wears Louis Farrakhan Muhammad. Yes, Come on. Sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's right. It means war. Not only are we going to war with the forces of darkness in this wicked world, but now we got to go to war with the devil of self. Is that right? Yes, sir. So it reads, Muhammad, Surah 47, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, those who believe and turn men from Allah's way, he will destroy their works. And those who believe and do good 
and believe in that which has been revealed to Muhammad. And it is the truth from their Lord. He will, he will remove their evil from them and improve their condition. That's right. That is because those who disbelieve follow falsehood. That's right. And those who believe follow the truth from their Lord. Thus does Allah set forth their descriptions for men. Right? I'm going to stop right there. Go ahead, brother. I'm going to stop right there. But those who believe and do good, look at that. Let's stop right there. Those who believe and do good, Meaning, it can't be that you just saying something out of your mouth. Come on, right? You gotta actually do something with your hand. You gotta do something. That's you gotta right. do good. Is that right? Yes, sir. And believe in that which has been revealed to Muhammad. Right. And it is the truth from their Lord. Now, that's important because it says those who believe and those who do good, and those who believe in that which has been revealed to Muhammad. Come on. Meaning, even if you're just doing good, you're included in this. That's right. You see what I'm saying? It don't have to be all about Muhammad. If you believe in it, you following it in, in the footsteps of Jesus, or you following in the footsteps of, 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 of Moses, or if you following in the footsteps of Buddha, I don't Come care. Come on. That's right. As long as you believe and you're doing good. Is that right? Yes, sir. Right. But, it, but for us specifically, it's that which has been revealed to Muhammad. He will remove their evil, their evil from them, and improve their condition. That's right. So look, when evil is removed from us, and we start acting and moving in a certain way, we're no longer acting the way that the devil taught us to act. Hmm. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're no longer, uh, and I know it's legal in Colorado, but we're no, lo we no longer uh, token on, on that bud, hmm. on that That's chronic. Right. Do they call it chronic no more? They got all sorts of nags for it now. <laughs> when, I was, when I was growing up, they called it, uh, you know, just smoke the weed. Yeah. You know, you could have a little joint with a roach clip. Y'all yeah. remember roach clips? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The joint was so small, you had to put it in a little clip. <laughs> but now they smoking, they smoking, uh, they smoke a blunt. Primo. <laughs> yeah, Primo. Oh, we were talking about Primo, sister. They smoke the blunt. They, they crack a cigar open and empty the tobacco out and fill it up with weed. And now you got, you know, you're not just smoking no little uh, Reggie. That's regular weed, right? You're not smoking Reggie. Now they got all sorts of flavors. They got, uh, they got green crack. <laughs> they got the Incredible Hulk. I see, y'all smoke a weed called the Incredible Hulk? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? They got uh, Sativa. They got Indica. They got all sorts of different names, man, that they smoking. And here's the thing about it, uh, family. You know, bro. <laughs> you know I know, but I work in the barbershop. I know everything. <laughs> I know everything. I don't even got experience it. They come here and talk about everything. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. so, now, <laughs> so this week now, look, when, when we was young, and conf uh, confessions, I'm going to confess. Sorry. I'm going to confess. You know what I'm saying? I ain't come from heaven. You know what I'm saying? I smoked weed when I was when I was young. I smoked weed. Honestly, I smoked weed. This is, this is the uh, this is the God's honest truth. I have very uh, I have very uh, adverse reactions to any sort of medication. Right? Thank you. I have very adverse reactions to any sort of medication. So when I when I smoked this weed. I was youngster, I was like 12 or 13 years old. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. And um, my uncle was from Bermuda. But they used to get that weed 
from Jamaica. They used to smoke straight yes, guns. Go ahead. Guns. <laughs> guns. <laughs> so look, I smoked this weed, man. I can't, I can't even remember who I smoked it with. But I'm in the room, and the room is spinning. Oh my goodness. And I, I, I just didn't. I couldn't move. And I was praying. <laughs> I'm just telling y'all the truth. I laid in the middle of the floor, man. I'm just staring at the ceiling. And it was, I, I said, man, it's the same for me. You know what I'm saying? And that's the God's honest truth. I never smoked weed again after that. I just, I, I just didn't understand that the being high out your mind like that was crazy to me. Yes, sir. <laughs> but now, but back then, that was good weed. That was ganja. That was ganja. Right. Ah, call him out, call him out. Yeah, that was good weed, bro. And here's the thing, though. Good weed, brother. It was only 10% THC. Yes, sir. Back in the day. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Truth be told, now. Come on, come on. Now. Yes, now. About the weed now, they brother. smoking in Colorado, whether it be recreational, or medicinal. Did you all know that it is 30% to 60% THC? Go ahead. Mm. Now I just told you how I was spinning. I, <laughs> I was gone on that little 10%. Yes, sir. Now it's 30 to 60% THC. That's the thing in weed that gets you high, right? The medicinal uh, part in weed are the CBDs or the cannabinoids. That's the medicinal part of it. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? And that has tremendous value, you know, in terms of pain management and whatnot. But most of these kids out here are smoking, you know, you know why, to get high. Yeah, that's right. But as a result, our young people, I don't know if y'all walk up and down Colfax um, lately, or if you've just driven up and down Colfax and just looked at the people. We walking around like the, the walking dead. That's right. Exactly. The That's walking right. dead. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. And no matter how brilliant we are as children, that we is robbing us of our ambition. Yes, sir. I'm That's just speaking. Right. That's right. Go ahead, I'm brother. Go ahead. It, it robs you of your ambition because it really does. Right. Move with that one. And this is uh this is science. I won't even get into the fact that it's feminizing these young men. Yes, well. I won't even go into that. But the reality is, brothers and sisters, is as we grow older, especially as, as teenagers, you know, uh, uh, the black male's brain doesn't start developing until he's 26 years old. Mm. Go ahead. Did you all know that? Go ahead. And so when we start smoking weed, and it's that. 30 to 60 percent TAC, and we start smoking. Many of us at 14, 15, 16 years old, and we just keep smoking. Uh -huh. Then those brain cells that, and that brain that's developing, it's being destroyed. That weed is killing those brain cells. Yeah, that's right. That's right. This is science, man. I'm not lying to y'all. Uh, I'm yeah. telling you the truth, absolute truth. And so, as a result, again. We are becoming the white man's nigga. That's right. We're in the name over. of getting high. Yes, sir. See, our enemies, sisters and brothers, they don't stop. No, sir. It's war. It's war. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. <laughs> you war. see what I'm saying? Go ahead. They war. don't stop. They it stop. is war. It's right. constant. Constant war. When yes, we sir. sleeping, they working. That's, That's right. right. We are the whole the whole uh, reparations hearing that they had. That was a distraction. Mm. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. The whole uh, debate. presidential debate. Thank you, brother Ma. Yes, sir. Nights one and two. Yeah. <laughs> distraction. Distraction. Yes, right. sir. They see they constantly working on us. Constantly. Remember last week we talked about we love the devil because the devil gives us nothing. Mm -hmm. See, they're not they they telling us that they're not giving us nothing in these presidential debates. That's right. That's what they the say. The little lady Marianne Williamson or whatever whatever yeah. her name is, she's the the presidential candidate who talks about uh, 
reparations. She tried to mention it and they shut her down. They, they shut, shut her down, down so quick she couldn't even get it out of her mouth. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> she right. said, reparations. Oh, we're moving on to the next subject. Yeah. I said, damn. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Come on. But they're not giving us nothing. That's right. So now, it's still we still want to, uh, what? Yes, sir. That's right. We still want to watch. Now we're gonna get excited because Kamala Harris gave Joe Biden the business. She's a cop. She's a plant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But she not want. She don't want to give us nothing either. That's right. Set it out over our That's mouth. right. It's all a distraction to keep you from recognizing your own self. That's right. They don't give us nothing. It's nothing. Yet we still want to participate in their system. Okay. So the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan was writing these act and said, man, what are you going to do? What, do you, what, is, what, is, what does a white man's nigga do with reparations? Mm. What does a white man's nigga do with money? But give it right back to you. Right back. That's right. Not me. <laughs> so, in realizing that they don't have nothing for us, in realizing that the only way that you and I can solve our problems is if we get up and solve our problems ourselves. Yes, sir, that's right. That's right. In realizing that the only way that you and I are gonna have a black economy is if we create the black economy ourselves. Yes, sir. And realizing that the only way that you and I are going to have some real estate and have some land is if we pull our resources and buy some real estate and buy some land. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When we realize that, we achieve the victory. That's right. It's already been written. We just have to have the will to walk into it. So, Sir so 48, go ahead. <laughs> After we accept who we are with regards to being Muhammad. After we recognize that we're wearing the name, which means that we are praised much and worthy of praise. Yeah, that's that right. That that name belongs to God. After realizing that we accepted that name and we start following his path. The more we do that, the more we realize that we actually are God. That's right. Go ahead. Just like the scripture says that man is made in the image and likeness of God. Why? Because he is God. That's right. Go ahead. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So Surah 48, or chapter 48, is entitled al Fath or The Victory. And I, and I don't think it's a coincidence that the victory comes right after Muhammad. <laughs> mm. The victory comes right after who? That's right. Come on. The victory comes Come right on. after you recognize who your enemy is and you decide in your mind to make war with him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. That's the only way you can achieve mm. the victory. Mm. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Surely, we have granted thee a clear victory mm. that Allah may cover for thee thy alleged shortcomings in the past and those to come. Yes, sir. And complete his favor to thee and guide thee on the right path. Mm -hmm. And that Allah might help thee with a mighty help. He it is who sent down tranquility into the hearts of the believers that they might add faith to their faith. And Allah's are the host of the heavens and the earth, and Allah is ever knowing wise. That he may cause the believing men and the believing women to enter gardens wherein flow rivers to abide therein and remove from them their evil. And that is a grand achievement with Allah. Yes, sir. And that he may chastise the hypocritical men and the hypocritical women and the polytheistic men and the polytheistic women and entertainers of evil thoughts about Allah, on them is the evil turn and Allah is wroth with them and has cursed them and prepared hell for them and evil is the resort. 
and Allah's are the hosts of the heavens and the earth, and the Allah is ever mighty wise. That's Surah 48, 1 through 7. Now I want to go back a little bit. Because this is important. The victory. Surely we have granted thee a clear victory. That Allah may cover for thee thy alleged shortcomings mm. in the past and those to come. Yes, sir. And complete his favor on thee and guide thee on the right path. Now this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Because another thing that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said during this historic reparations conference was that he was a repaired man. Yes, sir. <coughs> I'm going to say that. That's what he said. <laughs> he said he's a repaired man. Yes, sir. Right. <coughs> that he's the example of one who's went through this process and as a result he is who he is. That's right. Come on, come on, come on. That's right. Go I'm not listening. Come on. Go this is so important because this man right here, he is our example, brothers and sisters. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, he's the one that the scripture was talking about, that if you follow me where I am, you might also be. That's right. He's the one. That's right. Not no Jesus from 2,000 years That's ago. That's right. You don't know him. How could you? He existed 2,000 years ago. Yeah, go ahead, brother. I mean, really. Go ahead. How could you? But here's a man in your midst who says, by his own admission, I'm a repaired man. Yeah. Which means he's been restored. Yes, sir. Something was taken from him. Now he has it back. And this is what he looks like. Yeah, go ahead, right. brother. Go ahead. Right. This is the man who speaks to the multitude. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Is that right? Yes, yes sir. This is the man who made the blinds.